Okay, example problems for Newton's second law. First one, what force must act on a 50 kilogram mass to give an acceleration of 0 0.3 meters per second squared? We are going to use the equation for Newton's second law, which is F equals ma. The mass is 50 kilograms and the acceleration is 0 0.3 meters per second squared. Plug that in. 50 times 0 0.3 is 15, and the unit is kilogram meter per second squared. Now we have defined this unit, and we have named it after Sir Isaac Newton, who did a lot of tremendous work in this area. So we're going to say that a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So the answer can be written as 15 newtons. Newtons is the unit of force. Second example, 1,500 kilogram car starting from rest. We want to find the acceleration. Now, to do this, we are going to end up using the motion equations once again. Our data table starts from rest. Final velocity is 25 in a time of 50 seconds. The appropriate motion equation to use is v sub f minus v sub i over t. Plugging our numbers in. And then doing a little math, we get an acceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared. Part B, what force is acting on the car to accelerate it? Now, we can use Newton's second law, once again. Mass of 1,500 kilograms. Acceleration we found in part A. And 1,500 times 0 0.5 is 750 newtons of force. Number three. The rocket has a mass of 5.00 times 10 to the fourth kilograms. We want to know what the rocket weighs. If you apply Newton's second law in the vertical dimension, um, we can get an equation for weight. It turns out to be weight is equal to m times g. So we can plug in our mass and our g, and we get a weight of 4.90 times 10 to the fifth newtons. And if you write that out in decimal notation, it turns out to be 490,000. You don't really need the negative sign on G. You might be wondering about that. <clears throat> it's understood that weight acts downward, and we will put it in, we'll put that negative sign in when we need it. Part B. What is the minimum force that must be supplied by the engines in order to lift the rocket off the pad? Okay, so weight acts downward. Um, the engines apply a force upwards. Now, if we just remove the launch pad, and we look at the uh, comparison between the weight and the applied force, the applied force is the force supplied by the engine. Now, if the applied force is less than the weight, then gravity is going to win and the rocket's going to fall down, crash and burn. On the other hand, if the applied force is greater than the weight, then the applied force will win. And the, it will be able to not only counteract the weight, but lift the rocket off the pad. Now, the minimum force, or if they are equal, if the applied force and the weight are equal, then they are exactly matched, the forces are balanced, and the rocket will actually hover. The engines will be gone, but the, the uh, rocket will hover right there, same distance below the ground. So, the answer then, the minimum force to lift the rocket is equal to the weight, which we can write as positive 4.90 times 10 to the fifth, and it's positive because it's pointing up. The applied force is acting up. So, the minimum force to lift it is the force that matches the weight of the rocket. Part C. What additional force must be supplied if we want to accelerate this rocket up at 15 meters per second squared? Okay, to, to accelerate the rocket, we need an additional force um, than just the weight. We'll need a net force. Only net forces accelerate objects. So, in order to get an acceleration, we are going to need a net force. Now, that net force can be found by Newton's second law. F net is equal to M times A. We know the mass of the rocket. 5 times 10 to the fourth is 50,000 kilograms. And we know the acceleration that we want. So, plugging in our numbers, doing a little math, we get a net force of 750,000 newtons. That's the additional force 
that's used to accelerate the rocket up. Part D, what is the total force exerted by the engines? This is an important point. The total force exerted by the engines has to be two things. One, counteract the weight, and, and in addition to accelerate the rocket. So it has to hold it up, and it has to push it up. So the total applied force will be the sum of the magnitude of the weight and the net force. The applied force will be 750,000 newtons, that's the force to accelerate it, and in addition, the 490,000 newtons is merely to counteract the weight. So the total amount of force that must be supplied by the engine is 1,240,000 newtons, or in scientific notation, 1.24 times 10 to the 6, positive. Again, the, the total force has to be two things. Okay? Counteract the weight, and then accelerate the rocket. And it always has to counteract the weight. Bring the total punch light up. I'm going to do this, slight, I'm gonna do this again, but in a more ma mathematical sense. And um, because we could say, mathematically, that a net force is always the vector sum of all the forces acting in a, in a particular dimension. Um, or more, say, in mathematical language, F net is equal to F1 plus F2 plus however many forces there are in the problem. The net force will be the vector sum of all the individual forces. Now, in this case, the dimension is the vertical dimension. There's the net force. And then F1 and F2, the individual forces, are the applied force and the weight. Okay. So we can say, we can write it like this. The net force is equal to the applied force plus the weight. Now, if we do this, we're going to insert the value, but we have to be very conscious of the signs. F net is positive, for example, and, and the weight is negative. That's, that's an important consideration that we have to remember here. When I plug the, this is positive, and then the weight is negative. Now, if we want to solve for the applied force, algebraically, we can do so by adding 490,000 to each side of this equation. The 490,000 will cancel out, and I'll get F sub A equals to the algebraic sum of these two, when you just adding them up, and we get the same. So, the previous approach would be what I call the intuitive way to do it. This is the more mathematical way to do it. There are advantages to each depending on the situation. Four, rocket having a mass is, and we push for this. Here's our sketch, which I encourage everybody to draw. Sketches are fun. Problem easy. Problem uh, A, what is the net upward force acting on it? And we're looking for the net force. Now, you may think it's this, positive 1,407 newtons, but it isn't because, remember, the force of the engines must always counteract the weight of the rocket. And this rocket always has weight. We can find out how much weight because we know the mass. So weight is equal to m times g, 100 times 9.8. So the weight of the rocket is 980 newtons. So now we can say that the um, weight is acting downward, 980 newtons. The applied force is acting upwards, 1,470 newtons. Since the upward force is larger than the downward force, the engine wins, essentially. The engines win over the weight, and there is a net upward force. I say it like this. Who wins and by how much? Well, the engines win. By how much? The difference between these two magnitudes. We can find the net force by the difference, 1,407 newtons minus 980, and that results in a force, a net force of 490 newtons. Taking the more mathematical approach, we'll use the vector sum, the net force is the vector sum of the applied force and the weight. The applied force is positive 1,470, the weight is a negative 980. The algebraic sum of these two is once again 490 newtons. Part B. What acceleration does this produce? Well, 
Um, if we know the net force and we know the mass, then we can use the second law. F to the F net to the MA. We're going to solve for A by dividing each side by M. And then A is equal to F net divided by M. Putting the numbers in, 490 newtons over 100 kilograms. And I'm going to substitute the kilogram meter per second into the newton. Remember our definition? Problem number one. And then the kilograms are going to cancel themselves out. We are left with meters per second squared as a unit, which is necessary since we're looking for an acceleration. And then the numbers turn out to be 4.9. So the answer is 4.9 meters per second squared. Next. A box is being pulled across the floor. It requires the force of 120 newtons to pull at constant velocity. Calculate the coefficient of friction mu. Okay, our expression for mu is this. Mu is equal to the ratio of the force of friction divided by the normal force. Now, um, we're going to draw what's called a free body diagram in the situation. A free body diagram is a fancy term for the diagram showing all the forces on a particular object. Now this object is a box that's sitting on the floor. It is having an applied force of 120 newtons, pulling to the right, say, if I have it drawn. There's a force of friction pulling, um, being exerted in the opposite direction. There's a weight. Box, the box has weight, so there's going to be a force pushing the box against the floor. And then the reaction force to this will be what we call a normal force, the force of the floor pushing on the box, supporting it. Normal is, is uh, in a mathematical sense, perpendicular. So the normal force is the force that's being exerted perpendicular to the surface. That's why they call it a normal force. It means um, really perpendicular force. Okay. Now, if the object is on the horizontal surface, like it is here, then the, the normal force equals the weight. They have to exactly balance. Because if they didn't, then the box would either it would either move down or up, depending on which one's bigger. But it doesn't. The box just remains on the floor. So the so the normal force and the weight have the same magnitude. That allows me to find the normal force by finding the weight. So the normal force, remember we're going to use it for up here to find you. So the normal force equals the weight which is mg, or 245 meters. Now, what we need to find is, so I labeled it the normal force right here. Now what we need to find is the force of friction. Okay, the key words in this are constant velocity. The box is being pulled at constant velocity. What that means is that the acceleration of the box is zero. There is no acceleration if it's moving at constant but then, by Newton's second law, if the acceleration is zero, then the net force is zero. Remember, net force is equal to ma, well, the mass is not zero, so the acceleration is zero implies that the net force is zero. Acceleration is zero, net force is zero. And if there's no net force on the box, what that means is the force of friction and the applied force exactly match each other. There's no net force in the horizontal. So the forces are balanced. What that means is the applied force and the frictional force are equal. And so, since the applied force is 120 newtons, then the force of friction is 120 newtons. This all came about because of the key word, constant velocity. Since the box is moving with constant velocity, once again, the acceleration is zero, which implies that the net force is zero, which implies that these forces are all balanced. This one and this one. Y force and force three. And that gives us value for force of friction. So, now we can plug it in. We know the force of friction is 120 newtons. Magnitude, so we're going to put that in. The normal force is 245 newtons. And so, the, the um, coefficient of friction turns out to be 0.49. Note that the newtons cancel themselves out. Mu 
is one of the few quantities in physics that do not have any units. It's called a dimensionless quantity. And the reason it doesn't have any units is because the units here cancel themselves out. Number six. If a box has a mass of 50 kilograms, click it. Find the force of friction. Okay, we're going to start with a sketch. Okay, there's box, mass, coefficient of friction. We're going to draw the forces on here. Remember, let's draw the free body diagram. Apply force to the right. I always just draw it to the right, just by habit. Then the force of friction is going to be to the left. The weight is going to act down, and the normal force is going to act up. So you could always sketch and include all the forces on the object. Now, the expression for mu, force of friction over the normal force. In this case, we want to find the force of friction. So I want to isolate F sub F, which I can do by multiplying both sides by the normal force. Normal force cancels itself out, and we get the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. Mu, as you recall, is 0.24. Okay, but now we need to find the normal force. Well, remember that the normal force and the weight are the same, have the same magnitude. So we can find the normal force by finding the weight. M times G. The mass is 50 kilograms. After multiplying by 9.8, we get 490 units of weight and therefore normal force. So now I know mu, 0.24. I know the normal force, 490 newtons. And after multiplying them together, I get a force of friction of 117.6. And if I'm worried about significant figures, uh, this says 2. We'll say this says 2, so our answer needs to be the 2. So I'm going to round. I need to keep this one, this one, and then I, for rounding purposes, i got to go here, and I'm going to round this up to 120. Next one. Coefficient of starting friction, 0.65. We want to know what force is needed to begin a steel box of this weight moving across the floor. Drawing our diagram, three body diagram, what we want to know is the applied force. Now, this is the force needed to begin the box moving, and it has to overcome friction in order to do so. So, what, we're going to, what, we, what we really need. We're going to find this, then we need to find the force of friction. And the force of friction is going to be mu F times the normal force. Okay. Now, all along we've been um, using the, the weight is equal to the normal force, and it will be in this case as well. Okay, But we don't have to multiply anything by G because it already gives us the weight. It says it weighs 2,500 newtons. We don't have to do any computation. It is there. We give it to us. So all I really have to do is plug in mu and normal force. And our force is 1625 newtons. And once again, for sig fig purposes, uh, we're going to keep two. And so this will be rounded down. And we have to. Next, the coefficient of friction for sliding, of sliding friction, is 0.55. What force is necessary to keep the box moving at a constant speed across the floor? Well, once again, same type of analysis. But this time, remember, the key words are constant speed. If with constant speed, the acceleration is zero, which implies the net force is zero, and which, again, if there's no net force, and this force here and this force here must exactly balance each other out. So that gives us that the applied force and the friction force are the same. Now, since they're asking us for applied force, but it's the same as the friction force, if I find the friction force, then that will be the applied force. So my problem kind of shifts from finding the applied force to finding the friction force which we can do so by mu times the normal force. Mu 
to be 0 0.55 times the weight that was given, or the normal force. And this gives us an answer of 1,335 newtons. We're going to round this up this time. So the force of friction is 1,400 newtons, and that's also the applied force. Calculate the acceleration of this. This is five. Okay, now if you look carefully at this, we have an applied force to the right of positive 30 newtons. We have a force of friction acting to the left of 20 newtons. And I'm labeling it negative, signifying that the left is the negative direction. Now, we have a net force in this case because these are not in balance. The vector sum of these forces are force applied plus force of friction, positive 30 newtons for the force applied, negative 20 newtons for the force of friction, and that gives us a net force of positive 10 newtons. We can use this in Newton's second law, solve it for the acceleration. Plug in our numbers. A little math, and we have 2.5 meters per second squared of acceleration. We're going to use Newton's second law, noting that there is a net force in this situation. This situation, object of mass 500 kilograms resting on the floor. We want the force necessary to accelerate the object at 2.4 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, they give us a coefficient of friction. If, if they give us one, we can assume that friction is present. So I'm going to just draw the force of friction in there. Obviously, the box also has weight, and if it's resting on the floor, there's also a, no, there's also a normal force. Complete the diagram. Now, we can find the force of friction. Okay, now, there is... I should say, should say there is a net force here. We need to find out what this net force is. Okay. Now we can do that, um, but before we do that, let's find out what the force of friction is. Let's find this force of friction. Mu times the normal force. Remember, mu is given and the normal force, which is the same as the weight. So I can find the normal force. I'm finding the weight. I'll just substitute in mg for the weight, just so I only have to calculate once. Putting my numbers in, we get a force of friction equal to this times this times this, which gives us a value of 1,960 newtons. That's the friction force, the force that's causing the box to lag behind. Okay, put that in the diagram here. Now what we can do is we can find what the net force is. And I can find that by F equals MA. And so we know the mass, we know the acceleration, and so we can find 1,200 newtons. Now we could have done that first and then found the friction force second. The order didn't matter, but we need to, we needed to find each of these. The net force and the force of friction. Because now, the applied force has to do two things. One, it has to overcome the friction. And as long as that box is on the floor, there will always be friction. It's kind of like the situation with the rocket, um, where the applied force for the engine has to always counteract the weight. In the horizontal case, the applied force has to always overcome friction. It's always present, as long as the box is on the floor. The other thing that this applied force has to do is accelerate the body. So, one, it has to overcome friction, and it has to, the applied force has to be 1,960 newtons to do that. And to accelerate the box, it needs an additional 1,200 newtons. So, the total applied force is the sum of these two. Okay. Or, 3,160 newtons which, if I take say, things into consideration, is 3,200. Honestly, um, I would accept 3,160 
applying a more mathematical analysis to this, we're going to say that the force friction is negative because it's acting to the left. The net force is acting to the right, so it's going to be positive. And to find the applied force, I'm going to, I'm going to use the, that the net force is equal to the vector sum of the applied force and friction force. Plugging my stuff in, net force is positive 1,200. The force of friction is negative 1,960. Solving for F sub A involves adding 1,960 newtons to both sides. Cancels itself from the right, and we get an applied force of 3,160 newtons again. Okay, two boxes of mass 20 and 15 are suspended, such like so. There's a rope connecting the two. This is a frictionless pull. Friction between this box and the table is 0.25. What we want is finding the acceleration of the box. Okay. Now, the force that accelerates the boxes comes from the weight of this block, of this box. We can find out what that weight is. And I called it M2G. That's the weight. And this was 15 times 9.8, which is 147 newtons. So there's 147 newtons pull that is uh, force that the Earth is pulling on this box. Now the rope that connects the two boxes will transmit this force to the 20 kilogram box. So this box will be pulled to the right with a force applied of 147 newtons. Because the rope, we're going to assume that the rope doesn't stretch. So the, so the force in this box is the same as the force in this box. Now, the coefficient of friction implies that there's a force of friction. Okay. We want to find out what that force of friction is. So the force of friction is mu times the normal force. Now, the normal force is the weight of 20 kilogram box. This is the, the box that's in contact with the table, the, the box that's involved in the friction. Okay. So we can find that by M1 times G, 20 kilograms, 9.8 is 196 newtons. That's the weight, that's the normal force. Mu is 0 0.25. So to find the force of friction, what we need to do to use mu times the normal form. Plugging our numbers in, we get 49 newtons of friction force. So now what we have is an applied force of 147 newtons to the right and a friction force of 49 newtons to the left. I'll call it negative because it's acting to the left. And now since these forces are not in balance, there is a net force to the right. Which we can find, well, we can find the net force by the vector sum of these two, it turned out to be to the right. The applied force is positive, 147 newtons. The friction force is negative, 49 newtons. This adds up algebraically, positive 98 newtons. Okay, so there's a net force that will move the boxes of 98 newtons. Now, finally, we can find the acceleration from Newton's second law. The reason that I was computing all these forces is because I realized that to find the acceleration, I'm going to have to use Newton's second law. And I'm going to have to find the net force in order to do that. Well, I have the net force now. It's 90 newtons. I'm going to solve for A by dividing by M. And I get this, F net divided by M. Okay, so now, the net force is 90 newtons, but the trick is, what mass do we use? 20, 15, both, which ones do we use? Well, we have to ask ourselves a question. Which masses accelerate? Does this mass accelerate? And the answer is yes, because the Earth is pointing downward. Does this mass accelerate? And the answer is yes because the rope 
will pull it. So really, since both masses accelerate, we need to use both masses in our equation. We need to use the total amount of mass. And the reason is because both masses move. So our net force is 98 newtons, and our mass is the sum 20 plus 15. And then our answer, after doing the math, is positive 2.8 meters per second squared. So both masses accelerate at this rate.